Uh, well, we both, yeah, we both come from music backgrounds, um, and our backgrounds, he's like a, you know, a jumped up country boy, in the words of uh, Morrissey. Yeah. Is it Morrissey? I don't know. He's, he's from the country, and I'm sort of almost halfway to the country. So, you know, a lot of the, the, the jokes are the same, really, you know. I, I think we've got more in common than, than people uh, would sort of have us believe. We just happen to have made different music. I, I think everything's melancholy, really, with me and him. Uh, but the mood in the studio was, was the opposite to that, really. Because we like to sort of cover over all our insecurities by uh, taking the piss. When in actual fact, you know, we, we're coming up with all this sort of really dark lyrical content. Would you agree with that? I'd agree. If, you, if we're not talking about Jet from Gladiators, we're talking <laughs> or, or football, we'll, you know, just kind of like make play Call of Duty. Yeah, kill people. Kill people. Like a lot of the songs on this album were sort of all written at the same time, really. And, and one of the songs on this album is the first song we ever wrote. So it's not like we wrote the first album and then wrote this one with no collaborations, but just for some reason the ones that we chose for this album aren't the ones that we collaborated on really. I think collaborations need to feel quite natural for us as well, you know, mm. rather than set out. If, if someone's around and we start getting on with someone and they happen to be... Yeah, I mean there's a lot of that sort, you know, if you're signed to a major, which we're not, or when we weren't signed at all when we were making the music, you know, it's, there's obviously other people on the roster and stuff, so a lot of the sort of collaborating uh, happens via the labels, so we're, we're not really plugged into that. So it just depends on whether we end up going out with someone, you know, or seeing them, or and we don't really go out really. So, well, like Mike said, we we wrote the first and the second album together at the same time, um, and it could have been a double album. Yeah, Guns N' Roses style. We, what we tried to do is we tried to write a, a load of really good songs. And the ones that didn't kind of make it, or didn't feel as good, we put them online and made them into almost art projects. You know, Mike would do a video, um, and we'd try and make it uh, interesting as uh, and vis visually as well as. But, but then, out of the ones that sort of didn't make the album, came, you know, from that we sort of there were really good ones in that lot of songs. So we ended up putting them on an album. It just seemed like a bit silly to just sort of draw a line into that and go, now, you know, now we're moving on. Because I think people, I think people need to feel like you really mean it, you know, and we do really mean it. People used to say things like, oh, why didn't you put that song on a Streets album? And I'd be like, well, you've got that song. So why did I need to put it on the album, you know? Because I gave it you on Twitter. It's sort of, it's all the best songs that we've written so far. And and that just hap they just happen to all sound quite classic, whereas the the first album was quite uh, experimental, I guess. Everything's weighing light. He does not shout. I never once saw him lose his temper. We, we don't really listen to music, really. We we make it. It's a weird thing to say, and a lot of people have asked us, you know, what. Um, you know, what we've been listening to and stuff. I mean, we, it sort of happens in the background, really, but we spend more time making music than we do listening to it. So there's a lot of other people uh, that know a lot more about music than us. I like to copy some records. Yeah. You know. What, rec rec what records have you copied? Um, I like, but it always turns out like totally different. I'll try and copy a record and it'll just turn out nothing like what I tried to copy. So like I yeah, tried to copy... Uh, right Side of Madness. Yeah, try to copy The Weeknd. Yeah. The Weeknd? Yeah, it kind of didn't sound anything like it. Yeah, Handel. I, I had an MRI last week, and um, and they ask you, before you go into, you know, before they bolt you into the to the plastic tube that that is just really horrible for if you're in any way claustrophobic, um, they ask you if you want to listen to a CD, you know, and, and I chose Handel because uh, I didn't want to listen to anything contemporary, you know. <laughs> and man, it was fucking mental because you got this like magnet spinning around you, like yeah. you're inside a washing machine, yeah. bolted in, yeah, like yeah. that. 
yeah. bolted in, yeah. and, the, and, the, and the tube is like that. That yeah? close? Yeah, and there's a magnet spinning around your head. And they put headphones on you, right, because they're like, there's a big magnet spinning around your head, so listen to music and you'll be alright. But what actually happens is you get this like crazy like Doppler effect. Yeah, and you listen to classical music and you bolt it in like that and it feels like clockwork orange and it's fucking horrible. Is it? Yeah, and I pressed the panic button. Did you? Yeah, I pressed the panic button. <laughs> I was like, switch that. I didn't say switch that fucking music off. Of it. Yeah. I should have. Mm. Like, felt, you know, but you don't want to be rude, do you? So I, I said, can you turn the music off, please? And they turned it off and it was alright after that. And you didn't replace it with anything else? No, man, you can't, you can't have a spinning magnet going around your head and listen to music. It, it, it's better to just have a spinning magnet on its own. Uh, I, I used, when I was a DJ, I used to have to go to record shops because it was, um, cause you needed to get records, obviously. Um, but I, I sort of, I found it really um, intimidating, if, if I'm honest. You know, I'd sort of go in there and there'd be loads of people older than me. And, um, and I'd be buying all these sort of house records and I'd end up spending, you know, 30 quid on stuff. Most of it I didn't really like. I, I, said, I said I sort of, I was into MP3s, you know, I said that on Jules Holland once and, and the shit on Twitter was off the chain, you know, people get really like, it's like when you start talking about Margaret Thatcher, you know, people just get angry. So I'm sorry if you're angry at me for liking MP3s and, uh, you know, sitting at home, downloading stuff off the internet. I mean, vinyl sounds better. My mate's into vinyl, and every time I go for dinner at his house, it does sound better, you know, with Bowie records. My favourite track off this album is The Watcher. Yeah. What was that big single? Still? Still Dre, yeah, yeah. that was the single. Yeah. Bad. Bad was my first, my, my first cassette I ever bought, and, um, Ever since then, I've been a massive Michael Jackson fan. So, I mean, that's like a best of, right? History's like a best of, isn't it? So, oh, I thought that was an album. Maybe it is. No, it does say present and future. Yeah. It's kind oh, of like it is, yeah. It's like the greatest hits. It's like a best of, yeah. Okay. And then, and then segueing into a bit more classic soul here, we have Weapons of Peace, which I'm is... Not familiar uh, with. So, to me, I think this sounds like a DOT tune, Weapons of Peace, that Rob would have wrote. If Rob, if Rob emailed me one day, um, it wouldn't surprise me if he sent me a song that he wrote called Weapons of Peace, because it's got, it's got opposites, there's, there's aggression, there's Buddhism, it's anger, you know, it's uh, overcoming anger. This, is, this should have been a Rob Harvey solo album. But the suits would be me, obviously. So that's why it is basically a DOT album. Because it's me, massive collars, Tom Ford designed, obviously. I'd be in the Tom Ford suit. There we go. This is the OJs. And uh, they're, uh, this is like classic Philly soul. And they, they, uh, they did a, uh, they worked with MFSB, which I didn't actually realize um, MFS, F, MFSB did the, my favourite disco record called Love Is The Message, which I played at New Year's Eve last year to a group of uh, ravers in Southampton, and they fucking loved it. Is it. Classic disco. But MFSB played the strings and horns on this album, and um, and I didn't realise, but MFSB is mother, father, sister, brother. Which again could probably be a Rob Harvey. Uh, <laughs> Which I said. <laughs> Peace, you know, aggression, Incestuous. anger, incest. <laughs> it's got it all. And, and, and one of the most classic breakbeats ever is an OJ's uh, cut. <laughs> 